Our back door that we installed the doggy door was kind of boring, but I knew there was an inexpensive way to make it look a lot better without having to get a new door. First thing I did was I got some sawhorses and put some two by fours across. This will give some strength to the plywood I got to put down. Next, some really inexpensive one quarter inch Lawan plywood. As you can see, it's actually really lightweight and it's only a quarter inch thick. It's got some beautiful grain to it if you ever want to do some staining. But the first step is to go ahead and mark what we're going to do on the top and bottom of the door. I'm going to go with six inches on it, but we need to make sure we put some tape down because this type of plywood will splinter. So we're going to mark six inches across the bottom and we're going to go ahead and cut it up. I went ahead and used my saw, just went straight across. And again, you got to make sure you put some tape down. And here's the good reason why. Look at how sharp those edges are. No splinters or sanding required. Then I trimmed it to the width of the door and it's time to put some glue on. A lot of people think that you can just use nails, but you can't. Put some good wood glue down and it will hold and secure all along without any bubbles. Next, I took a foam brush and I went ahead and just spread the glue. Now, what you need to do is get it all over, especially around the edges. That's going to make it hold flat. Once you get that, just go ahead and put it up next to the door. And we're going to go ahead and use some really small one inch brad nails to hold it in place. Now the glue makes it a little slippery. So put one nail in one corner, line it up with the door and go ahead and nail it in. Now we're not going to overload this board with too many nails. We've got to make sure we do just the right amount. That glue is going to set up in about half an hour. Next, we had to go on the bottom, but we had to go around the doggy door. Wanted to make sure that we got it all covered. So put some glue on, snap it into place, and it doesn't take that many nails. And we're just going to use that brad nailer and put it right on there. Next, we got to take the door knobs off because we've got to put our trim around the sides. Now, six inches along the top, that was the width, but on the sides, we're going to go a little bit smaller with four inch. Put the glue on the board and again, nail it up and down. Not too many nails, just enough to hold it in place. Now it's time to cut out where the doorknobs were. Again, we got to use tape. Take a drill bit on the back of the door. Go ahead and outline where your doorknob's going to go. Now, I just went ahead and used my jigsaw and cut out a hole. It's going to come right out. And if you need to go ahead and sand it to make it a little bit smooth, go right ahead. Next, it was time for the last piece. Put some glue on it. And this one, we're going to put right in the middle between the doorknobs. Make sure we measure it as straight and perfect. Put some nails in. Now we got to cover up the seams and the nail holes. I went ahead and used some DAP plastic wood. It goes on pink, but when it dries, it comes the color of the wood. Go ahead on the seams, use a spackle knife to put it in place. But when it comes to the nail holes, all you have to do is just go ahead and put it inside. It dries pretty quick and just rub it off and get it nice and smooth. Once it dries, go ahead and just sand it down, make it look really good. Do that with all of the plastic wood that you put on and get it nice. And next, it's time for paint. I went ahead and used a primer and paint in one. I wanted to get some good coverage. You're going to paint the whole door. We're not going to go with a dual color on this one. We're just going to go with one. So you're just going to paint everything. I used a little foam brush about four inches wide. It rolls on nice and smooth. I didn't want to use brush because I didn't want any strokes, but here we go. Let's put those doorknobs back on. And do you remember that old door that we had? Look at that. Now with the trim, how beautiful is that? I only spent about $12 transforming this door. Didn't have to go out and spend $100 to make it look good. I hope you enjoyed this project. We sure did. And we can't wait to see you again on Home Talk. We just bought a house that needed a lot of work. There is this weird room leading from the garage into the house. It had a closet that I knew we wouldn't use, so I decided to make it into a usable space. So I removed the bifold doors and removed all the hardware on the doors. After measuring the length and width of the closet, I transferred those measurements onto the doors and cut them to size. 
I had to cut both ends of the doors because the way the panels were laid out on the door, I didn't want to cut a panel in half. The width of the doors were wider than my cutting range on my saw, so I just had to flip them over to continue my cut. I cut both bifold doors this way. The doors are hollow core, so I needed to make sure they were strong enough to sit on. I took the ends of the doors that I had cut off and removed the front and the back panels, so I ended up with just a solid piece of wood on the end. The panels were easy to remove with a chisel and a hammer. I placed the end into the door and nailed it into place. Then I filled the gaps with wood filler for a cleaner look. After all the gaps and the wood filler had dried, I sanded everything smooth, including the door. Next I primed and painted the door white. It took one coat of primer and two coats of interior paint. Now to cut the frame for the bench. I used two by fours cut to size. I cut six 14 inch pieces for the sides, four 59 inch pieces for the top and bottom, and six 13 and a half inch pieces for the cross pieces. I used a Craig jig to drill the holes into the ends for a stronger joint. If you don't have a Craig jig, you could just screw them together at an angle, but they won't be near as strong. After I cut all the pieces, I laid the bottom of the bench out onto the bottom of the closet and screwed the pieces into place. Then the side or vertical pieces were next which I screwed into the bottom of the frame. The top of the bench was built just like the bottom and assembled outside the closet. Once it was together, I placed it on the vertical pieces and screwed them into place. Now I had a nice solid frame. With the bifold doors cut to size, I used one for the front of the bench, sliding it into place. I had to use a rubber mallet because it, it was a little tight. I laid the other door on top, making sure it was nice and square. The doors were not as wide as the closet, so I measured the distance between the wall and the door and cut a one by four to size. I also cut thin pieces for each edge of the door of the bench this was to ensure that when you lifted the bench lid up, you wouldn't scrape the sides of the wall. I painted those boards to match, laying the door and the one by four into place. I screwed the one by four into the frame. I filled the holes with wood putty, and then I screwed on the hinge. The bench was complete. After a fresh coat of paint on the walls, a new shelf, and some antique finds, the room was now functional space that we use every day. The extra storage we now have is great for all of our beach gear and outdoor items. I hope this inspires you to transform an unused area in your home into something amazing.